Okay, so having seen now the problems that we have sometimes in MLR, let's take a look at how PLS can fix that. We're not going to go into all the details of PLS. We're trying to get the concept uh, of PLS. Um, so, so that's what we're going to do here. Okay, so what PLS does is that it tries to find a model between X and Y. It actually just tries to find a regression model, uh, but it does so in a uh, special way. Somewhat similar to a uh, PCA model, you can say. So let's have a look at a one component uh, model of my data. So if I do a one component model of my data, could be a PCA model or a PLS model, they will be slightly different. That would give me a score vector and a loading vector. And now I can do regression using the uh, score vector. Instead of using y, uh, sorry, x, I can use my score vector for regression. So I can predict y from t instead of predicting y from x. And let's take a look at how that would work if we do it on the two data sets that we just saw in the previous video. Now, I hope you can see that if you build a PCA model, a one component PCA model of these two variables, the first score is going to be essentially the same. There's hardly going to be any difference. So no matter if I get a score vector from this one or from this one, it's essentially going to be the same. And that also means that my calibration or my regression model going from T to Y is going to be the same. So it basically fixes the problem using the score instead of using the, the whole data set. Now, as I said, it's not really PCA. We do find a set of scores and loadings, but it's not really PCA. And, and let me explain uh, why we do something slightly different from uh, PCA. So here you see an example data set. It's a spectral data set. And each spectrum, each sample is colored by the Y that we want to predict. And you can see that there's a lot of variation in this area here, but the covariation, the relation to the Y information is actually not too good. So if I do PCA on this data set, then I'm going to find a loading that mainly reflects this uh, uh, area of high variation. But the score that I'm going to get is, is, is going to reflect the area there, but that's not going to reflect uh, the Y that I want to predict. And that's a pity. Especially because if you look to the right, you can see that there is an area here where there's actually a lot of good information related to Y. It's just not very big. Uh, and that's why PCA would not find it uh, immediately. So instead of doing a PCA-like model, we would like to do something that looks for the relevant information instead of just looking for the big information. So we would like to have a loading vector sort of something like this, which finds the relevant information. And to some extent, that's exactly what PLS does. PLS does not look for a component that describes as much variation in X as possible, but rather it has to describe X well, and it has to be related to Y. And how can we achieve that? Well, statistically, what we're doing is that we're trying to find a score vector that has the highest covariance with Y. Having a high covariance will mean that it has a high correlation and that it is describing major things in X. Now, we're not going to go into the details of how this is achieved. There's actually an extra set of loading uh, weights that are used uh, to, to find this solution, uh, but that's not uh, important uh, uh, for this particular video. So, so, but what is important is to understand that the PLS component is similar in structure algebraically to PCA, but it's found in a different way. So it doesn't have the same properties at all, and it's, it's not meant to. Now you can also imagine that if, if one component is uh, not enough, we may need to extract more than one component. Um, so that's basically what we do. First, we find the first PLS component, the one that has the highest covariance with Y. And then we subtract that information from both X and Y and use the residuals to do exactly the same 
one more time and then we can find the second component and the third and the fourth and the fifth uh, until we have a nice uh, description of our data. So what we do is that we find a set of components with scores and loadings and then we have what is called the inner relation. We have score one times a number that's a regression coefficient score two times another number etc and that's the regression model that we're building predicting uh, y from the scores through the inner relation 